Hello and welcome to another edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts. Right off the bat on today's show, Tesla is in the news as a court system has actually struck down the case against a group that was suing Tesla over an autopilot death. Now this particular family was trying to sue Tesla claiming that the autopilot system was to blame. The court system actually ruled in the favor of Tesla and said that the operator was not using the machine in the way it should have been used and they were actually to blame for the incident itself. Now Tesla's got a couple more of these court cases that are coming up so we'll see what happens in those moving forward. In another situation involving Tesla, many, many years ago, Tesla and a bunch of other manufacturers got together and decided on one plug that would be used for every automobile, every EV car around the world. Of course, then Tesla went back to their headquarters and designed their very own plug that only worked on their vehicles and using the infrastructure that they were actually building as we speak. Now, fast forward a handful of years later in a company called DG Now has actually developed an adapter that you can use. You can check out the video up on the Facebook page where they show them ch charging a Nissan Leaf with this particular deal. Now it only works on level 2 charging, not level 3 supercharging, but that being said you can still gain a lot of charging infrastructure by buying this adapter. But this adapter is not cheap, between $1,700 and $3,600 just for the adapter itself. But Still, you have a lot more places you could probably charge your automobile. Next up on the list, you may remember this machine. Did a story about last year, old Justin Bieber's heavily modified West Coast Customs 458 Ferrari wide body. Now, Mr. Bieber actually took this vehicle out, parked it, and then went clubbing and forgot where it was for three days. Luckily, he parked it in front of a hotel that actually kept it indoors for those three days to one of Bieber's people actually track the vehicle down after Bieber's night of clubbing. Fast forward to just the day before the taping of this program where this particular Ferrari went up for auction at the Barrett-Jackson auction in Scottsdale, Arizona and went for an high-watering $434,000. $500 and no doubt that that new owner has got a pretty quirky little story about the Bieber and his ex-Ferrari. Next up on the list, well with the Geneva Motor Show only a handful of months away, one of the machines going to debut here is this Singapore creation from the folks over at Vanda Electric. This is an all-electric hypercar developed with the folks over at Williams Advanced Engineering, a piece of of Williams Formula One team. Now this vehicle is, well at least from the video that they're showing off, and I got that up on the Facebook page if you want to check it out, has four electric hub motors, one for each wheel, and it's supposed to have some pretty monstrous performance. This vehicle is called, and I'm going to butcher this quite heavily, it's called the Dendrobrian. Yeah, I probably didn't even give that any bit of justice. And that particular name has actually got an origin which I won't talk about because the last time I talked about the origin of a name, I got called the C word in the comment section. Yes, that C word. So I'm not even going to talk about this particular machine. But I cannot wait to hear just what maybe this car could do performance wise. And we'll know coming up at Geneva, coming up in March. Another vehicle that we're anxiously awaiting what could be is the new SRT Demon. The second ever video in the video line of the head of this vehicle debuting at the New York Auto Show was released over the past couple of days. If you want to check it out, I got it up on the Facebook page as we speak. But here's the trick, kind of decoding this video. The thing's on somewhat of a plank that's held up by chains. Maybe a situation where this could be a scale. It's got a lot of parts of the interior of the car actually highlighted, including suspension, wheels, and some of the inner structure. It's got a lot of people thinking that this means that all these parts have been gone through 
try to lose a fair amount of weight. Now the Charger, or Challenger I should say, is a pretty heavy automobile, but they're claiming they may have lopped off up to 200 pounds out of this beast. And the sheer fact that that Hellcat engine could be making close to 800 horsepower means this thing's going to be a pretty big beast indeed. Another video actually surfaced over the past several days involving Vin Diesel thanking the crew for the latest Fast and Furious. And a lot of people are pointing out the two challengers that are in the background are the new SRT demons as well. Next up on the list, big congratulations to M Sport and Ford, the brand new Ford Fiesta World Rally car, getting its maiden voyage at Rally Monte Carlo, the last stage of that rally actually taking place today, and won in its first go-round. Now, Rally Monte Carlo is a little bit of a tricky situation. A lot of ice and snow means a lot of vehicles will go off in weird situations. They almost had a situation where they were going to have a 1-2 finish, but the teammate to the eventual winner, Sebastian Ogier, who went in just like he left the 2016 season, the four-time and the past four-time world champion, taking the win after, sadly, Terry Neuville, the a Hyundai driver actually clipped a rock, breaking the rear suspension of his machine. He was winning it quite handily by almost a minute when that particular situation went down and just plummeted through the standings as they were trying to repair that machine. But OJ was there. He actually kept his car, even though he went off several, several times, as he's had very little time to come to grips with the new Ford Fiesta WRC car. He got lucky in a lot of situations, but coming out of the winter. Now, Oik Tannock, his actual teammate, was actually set up to finish second behind OJ, but did have some engine troubles. It would have been kind of neat to see a 1-2 finish. Would have been the first time since 2011 since that actually took place. The second place finisher, as Oik Tannock actually fell back to third, was Yari Matty Lafita, which was Sebastian Ogier's last year teammate at Volkswagen in his first go round in the brand new Toyota Yaris, which showed very, very well in Rally Monte Carlo. It was a heck of a Rally Monte indeed. Cannot wait for Rally Sweden in a handful of weeks' time. Another big champion from the weekend is Juan Pablo Montoya, who won the Race of Champions down in Miami, the first time the Race of Champions has ever been run in the United States. In fact, he beat out this man, Mr. Uh, Lamal, Tom Christensen, to actually become the 2017 Race of Champions. And the day of the taping of this particular program, Team Germany and Sebastian Vettel actually end up winning the Race of Nations, beating out Kyle and Kurt Busch, who are racing for Team USA NASCAR. Sebastian Vettel took on all comers by himself. The Patrick Verline actually had a tremendous crash in a Polaris slingshot where he flipped the car. Thankfully, him and his co-driver were actually uninjured, even though he did have to pull out the day of this particular event. So Vettel took on all comers by himself. So big congratulations to him as well. Next up on the list, just a couple of days ago, I visited one of the little local auto shows. It's basically a dealer's show. But it shows you that you don't have to go to some of the big shows to get to see brand new stuff. In fact, there, right there for me to lay eyes on, in fact, I took this photograph myself, was the brand new 2018 Ford Mustang. Yes, it actually only debuted, what, a handful of days ago? And here it was at this little tiny dealer show that myself and my family go to every year. In fact, I got some pictures up of some of the other goodies that we got to see at the old auto show. So it shows you, you don't have to go to these big ones to see some cool stuff. And last up on the list, and some sad news, Hayden Pandon, a uh, Hyundai driver in the World Rally Championship, actually struck a spectator on one of the special stages. That spectator later passed away from his injuries. So a sad situation altogether. Hayden Pana and the Hyundai group on that side of the uh, paddock area actually stepped down from the event after the incident. So a big sad thing for Hayden Pana and the family of that spectator who was actually killed. All our prayers go out to all those families that are grieving and going through hard times as we speak. It's a sad deal indeed. 
And that's all there was that I thought was worth talking about for this edition of Motor Cars Enthusiast. Don't forget to like us over on the Facebook page. The link's down in the show notes. You can check out some of the videos we talked about in this particular video. Also, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, you can do so at any time and get the first dibs on the brand new shows as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again real soon.